You know, I'd never thought I'd make this video basically giving credit to Gordon Johnson. This is kind of unthinkable. This is a bombshell. I'm just kidding. But, I mean, the man deserves credit, and I'm not being cynical. I'm not being funny. I honestly think so. It takes a lot of skill to become this polarizing. Because at this point, this dude is worshipped by some people, saying that he's woke, that he knows things that the rest of us can't see, that he's the best analyst ever, mainly the Tesla Q people. And on the other hand, you have people that say that he's a complete buffoon, a clown, an idiot, the village fool. And on the third hand, if you have one, I mean, people think that he's taking money from Big Auto basically to promote this agenda, which I don't think is true, by the way, and I'll explain to you in a second why. I also don't think he's an idiot, and I also don't think he's the best analyst ever, but I think he's a pretty decent analyst. I'll explain everything in this video. So it takes a lot of skill to get to this point where you're relevant and you're being hated by one group, you're being adored by another group. It's pretty much like the UFC or the WWE or whatever promotion. I mean, you want to get your brand out there. And this dude has done a phenomenal job. I mean, he's very relevant. CNBC, you know, Fox, everywhere. People talk about him. People know his name. So for that, he deserves credit. However, in this video, I want to explain why he's doing what he's doing. And I don't think necessarily he's getting paid. I do think there's another thing here that you need to understand about Gordon, which some of you don't know. For example... A lot of you don't know that the tip rank screenshot we keep sending out as a joke where he's ranked like in the top 5% or 10%, <laughs> like 7,000 out of 7,000, that used to be completely flipped. I mean, when I say flipped, I mean, I think he was number one or number two on tip ranks as an analyst. He was the best analyst on tip ranks just seven or eight years ago, I think 2013 or 2012. He was literally the best analyst, like 80% success rate, great returns. This dude was the best. And now he's suddenly the worst? I don't think so. I don't think he just became an idiot overnight. You don't go from, you know, working at JP Morgan, Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> okay, Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, eh, a little bit iffy, but I mean, the dude went to a good school, has great education. So how does a guy like that, who used to be number one on tip ranks, becomes one of the worst rated analysts on tip ranks? And how does a guy like that gives a 60 or $70 target for Tesla? I don't think he's an idiot. I think that proves it. But why is he doing it? Because we've seen him go like Jerry. You remember that episode where Rick had Jerry fold himself into 12? Get out of the booth, take all your clothes off, and fold yourself 12 times. You got it. I mean, this is literally what he's doing. He's a financial gymnast. He's the Nadia Comaneci of financial analyst. He'll take Tesla data and he'll convolute it and he'll go crazy with it just to prove some point about some minuscule information that suddenly proves his point. I mean, we've all seen him do it. I mean, the man, he's a gymnast. Why does he do it? Is he an idiot? No. I'll give you an example. Like, I posted a few weeks ago about Norway, right? So we had Tesla overtake with VW, I think, in Norway. And all of a sudden, he started posting other countries. How about Spain? How about, you know, the rain in Spain? So here's the thing. It might have been Spain, but it could have been any country. I mean, if in Botswana, Umfufu Motors sells more than Tesla, he'll use that. I mean, he's going to use whatever information he can find to prove his point. But I don't think he's an idiot. I think he knows that this is all mumbo-jumbo garbage, and I'll explain why. I think there's two things in play here that you need to understand. Now, Gordon used fundamentals to become the best on tip ranks. He made smart decisions, conservative decisions, fundamentals, value investing, blah, 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 blah. That worked for him. That also worked for all the other good analysts. But Tesla flipped the script. The insane growth of Tesla in the last few years basically caused a lot of good analysts to look like shit. Because it didn't make any sense from a fundamentals perspective for a lot of time. It's still kind of shaky if you look at it from a pure fundamentals analysis. But most other analysts basically swallow the pill. Basically saying, well, we were wrong about Tesla. Let's move on. Adam Jonas is one, but there's a lot of other examples. So what about Gordon? Why he was the only analyst that stayed in his position. Even though every other analyst mostly kind of flipped and basically said, well, we were wrong. Why is Gordon still in this ship that's sinking like crazy? Well, I think there's two reasons. Number one, ego. I think for some reason, he can't let ego get the best of him. He can't admit that he was wrong. He was right for so many times. This is his Moby Dick. There's no other explanation. Now, not familiar with his ego or his personality structure, but it sounds like this is actually the case. But again, might be wrong, just my opinion. You know, might be inaccurate, might be the ramblings of a madman. You got to do research. I don't know Gordon. I don't know his personality. I'm just guessing. Now, the other part, which I think is even more important, 
is being relevant. Being relevant is the key. I think Gordon found a way to monetize the Tesla Q crowd. He knows that they need somebody to raise the flag. I mean, Michael Burry isn't really interviewing. He isn't really out there speaking about how much he hates Tesla. All we hear from him is, you know, the 13 Fs once in every quarter. That's it. A few tweets here and there. But he isn't in the public eye. Somebody needs to come in front of this Tesla Q crowd and basically be, you know, the flag, be the person, be the face of this brand, anti-Tesla. And he's doing it. And he's monetizing it. Look how much FaceTime he's getting on CNBC, on Bloomberg, on every single outlet. Whenever they need a Tesla bear, he's there because they know that people would tune in. They want to see this guy because it's so outrageous, so crazy. His target price is so low, people love to hate him. He's the classic villain in those WWE fights. They set him up to fail. And he knows it, but he's getting paid. He's getting the bag. I mean, he's getting TV appearances, relevance. That is worth money. That is monetized. So the ego combined with all this money of being relevant by being the main Tesla bear is worth a lot of money. That's why he can never change, even though I think deep down he knows Tesla is a great company. But at this point, his business depends on him being the bear and his ego depends on it. So I don't think he can ever change. You know, I can't imagine what it's like to be at the top of your craft, being number one, all of a sudden to being the worst in your category. I don't think ever this has been experienced in professional sports or even in analysts. Nobody has ever gone from number one to almost dead last, especially that fast. I mean, that will wreak havoc through your personality. I think you have to find a way to deal with it. There is a cognitive dissonance here that you need to solve. I think Gordon found a way to solve it. It's like Deontay Wilder against Tyson Fury saying that the gloves were rigged or whatever. You need to find a justification why that happened to you. Otherwise, it's a cluster freak for your brain. And I think this is what's happening here. But if you add in the bag from all these TV appearances and him being the main face of that, that tells you everything you got to know. Now, let me know below what you think. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me. Let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear it, good or bad. And I'll see you tomorrow.